Waste no more time arguing what a good man should be. Be one. Marcus Aurelius. You might think you know what side of the ballot box this suburban, East Coast, plant-based, stoic-quoting, francophile, women's college alum is on. But you'd be, well, you'd undoubtedly be right. I'm voting for Biden and Harris November 3rd. But today, I need to vote for me. Hello, veg heads. You're listening to Veg Your Best, the plant-based podcast. My name is Michelle Olander. I'm a certified life coach, a practicing vegan, and I'm here to try and convince you to show up, eat more plants, and not wait a single second longer to set an impossible goal, whatever that is for you. Episode six, where we ask who and what are you voting for? As I record this episode, the sixth Veg Your Best episode here in a closet in coastal Rhode Island, we are in the thick of the 2020 U.S. presidential election. And as I record this, my news feed is full of outrage and judgment. I am not immune, but when I find my brain hijacked by what I think other people should be doing, I try, I try and follow the advice of Roman Emperor Marcus Aurelius from almost 2,000 years ago. Waste no more time arguing what a good man should be and be one. Who are you voting for? Not just during this election, but today, this afternoon. What kind of world are you voting for with your decisions and choices? The Stoics teach that being an engaged citizen is important. Their philosophy was one of civic engagement and an active life, concentrating on the activities that are in the control of the individual, taking part in our communities, showing up, paying our taxes, voting, requesting oversight and transparency so those taxes are well spent, supporting responsible journalism, asking good questions, taking into our own hands remedies in the society that are ours to offer, including kindness, charity. These are actions that are within our control. Who ultimately is listed on the ballot on election day in any given year may not be. But there you are, real life. What we do have every minute of every day is an opportunity to cast many votes for the person we want to be regardless of who is emperor, like Marcus Aurelius, or president, attorney general, or Supreme Court justice. And that's a pretty tall order if you have as many areas to improve in as I do. Today would be a good day for me to vote for the kind of Michelle who is more focused and disciplined. Today would be a great day to vote for a future Michelle who is physically stronger and has greater endurance and stamina. One thing I learned in the beginning through coaching was how those areas I wanted to improve in depended so much on the emotion and energy that fueled those actions that I wanted to start or stop. Trying to change something with strong feelings of self-criticism or self-loathing or anger or resentment, not that effective. 
Have you noticed that in your own life? Learning a new skill or habit fueled by emotions like fun, curiosity and self-care or love for others, completely different. In a previous episode, I mentioned the difference between an appointment on my calendar with a client or with another person and having an appointment that does not include anyone else. Why would it be different? just words scribbled on my calendar? Well, because the feeling that fuels my actions to show up prepared and on time for my clients is always clear and unambiguous. Committed. The feeling is committed. The feeling that sometimes accompanies my plan to do something else rather than the work I scheduled on that calendar is maybe doubt doubt that it matters, or maybe fear, fear that I won't do a good job or that I will not be able to do it the way I hoped or that I will be criticized, or maybe ambivalent. And this one comes up a lot for me, maybe because I'm a Gemini. Ambivalent, that's experiencing the pull of two or multiple emotions. So for example, I have a writing session planned for 10 a.m., And now it's 10 a.m. and I'm thinking about whether there is laundry to do or a dishwasher to empty or a bill that has come through in my email that I better pay. None of which I would do if I had a client booked at 10 a.m. You'll be disappointed, perhaps, to learn that when I am avoiding doing something like writing or working on my business or strength training, my go-to avoidance behavior is not eating or watching Netflix, or online shopping, or drinking tequila. It is really, most of the time, very often, housework, housework, laundry, cleaning, all while listening to podcasts. I know, I'm wild. You know, I'm a 13th generation New England Puritan on my mother's side. And yes, there are witches. You know, Scarlet Letter, House of Seven Gables, The Crucible. Maybe we will talk about that sometime. So, like everyone else in the history of the world, I have things I do pretty responsibly and with a decent attitude, and I have a very long list of things I think I want to do, but I just don't. Or I do them in ineffective fits and starts. So, in this political season, when I find myself getting overly excited and outraged about the policies, choices, and behaviors of government officials and political candidates, and I do, I have a practice of bringing myself back to how candidate Michelle is showing up and whether I would vote for her. Not only whether I would vote for me, how do my behaviors my purchases, my choices, vote for the kind of society I want to live in. Finally, we are getting to something plant-based today. I started moving towards a plant-based vegan diet about 10 years ago, and I finally committed to those choices about five years ago, primarily because of my concerns for my health and even more viscerally, my husband's health. And we will talk about that much more in the future. But what keeps me committed is more than our physical health. What keeps me eating whole foods, organic when possible, local when possible, is my belief that in those choices, we're voting for the health of our local economies, the health of workers who are not surrounded by chemicals, pesticides and herbicides. And we're voting for food that travels fewer miles. With our purchases, we are attempting not to vote for things like animal food lots, the overuse of antibiotics, single-use plastics, monocultures used to feed animal agriculture, dangerous employee conditions at slaughterhouses, 
and hyper palatable frankenfoods that are engineered to be overconsumed and of no nutritional value. We compost religiously. Okay, that's a weird word pair that I think I regret having put together. But we, we compost, and we have composted for decades. Not everyone can, obviously, and not everyone can go to farmer's markets and food co-ops. Not everyone can afford the time that my husband puts into food shopping. And yes, it's my husband who is the food forager in our family, and he has been for 30 plus years. You know, some people golf, some people do woodwork, coach little league, work on cars, run marathons. My husband in his free time is a forager and loves to source local vegetables and fruits and support local farmers. Yes, I am lucky because I don't really enjoy shopping. So anyway, we try and vote for the support of our local farmers. We try and vote for nutritious whole foods for our daily consumption. We belong to a CSA where you buy a share of a local farmer's crop in advance so that they have some cash to invest in their workers, greenhouses, and supplies during the winter when they have very little to sell. And now, lest you think that this is just self-congratulatory, here are some things we are voting for in our day-to-day -day lives of which I am not proud. Single-use plastic. Before the pandemic, we had lowered our plastic use. We often brought our own containers to restaurants to get takeout. But since the pandemic, businesses will understandably not use your containers. And if we want to support our local family-owned restaurants and enjoy delicious, well, in our area, vegan Lebanese food, Indian cuisine, Chinese and Vietnamese food, well, we have a worryingly large number of plastic containers growing in the basement. And one of the miracles I pray for at night is a solution to plastic. So I am not proud at all of how much plastic we are consuming. Not proud either of how much water gets used to irrigate our garden. It was an extremely hot, dry summer here in southern New England. And we used a lot of water to keep our veggie garden, our shrubs and trees and flowers alive. We lost quite a few things in spite of a lot of water usage. And I'm trying to figure out now how to finally get some rain barrel systems in place. Rain barrels have been an item on my to-do list for at least a decade. I also want to replace the dead plants with species that will be more resilient. And I'm trying to learn improved mulching practices and timing for the irrigation to maximize the hydration. But the water usage, especially this year, was excessive and I'm not proud of it at all. Eating plants rather than animal products is a way of limiting water usage. And I will put a link in the show notes to the most recent information I have about that comparative. But obviously eating plant-based is not a panacea. It's not the only way to vote for responsible water management. So though I do personally believe that moving to a whole food plant-based diet is good for the environment, good for human health, and moves us away from industrial animal agriculture, a business that few people can Bear to really look at. It is obviously not the only way to serve as a citizen because there is no relative morality about who is an objectively better person. And that's a tone. That's a tone I sometimes hear used in the plant-based and vegan communities. Polarizing talk, some us and them talk, which I don't really think is very helpful. There are so many ways to serve as citizens. I have never run for public office and I'm not in a public health position. So perhaps I ought to remember to be less judgmental of those who are. I do not create technology or pharmaceuticals. So perhaps it's up to me 
to advocate strongly for what I think rather than condemn people for what they do. I contribute and support various people and organizations, but you might very possibly not agree with my donations, how much I give, or where I volunteer. You might think there are more pressing needs or higher priorities. And I hope that you will use your voice and your wisdom to help us all learn about those areas of need. On November 3rd, I only get one vote. But today, every day, I get to vote multiple times. I get to vote with my choices. I get to vote with my purchasing dollars. I get to vote with what I eat and who I spend time with, what I read, and what I support. When I find myself blaming and judging and condemning, I am frittering away the energy and time I have to actually advocate for change or argue for my point of view or challenge myself to be braver, stronger, more literate and compassionate. Gandhi's famous now almost cliche advice was to be the change you wish to see. You heard it, right? Which has been variously translated as you do you boo. So get out there and vote veg heads. And while you're at it, vote with your dollars for some of your local farmers and growers and business people and eat an extra handful of greens. Vote with your time to show your health some care, some movement, and some kindness. Today I'll practice shutting my phone off, redirecting my attention to the work I have, and doing some boring, uncomfortable stretching exercises. Thanks for listening to the podcast. Please let me know how we can tackle any questions or topics you have while I learn how to record these episodes. Today's is being recorded in a closet surrounded by pillows to try and dampen the sound a bit. And I will post that highly professional photo on Instagram and Facebook for your amusement. And if you're curious how working with a coach can help you with your plant-based goals, schedule a free mini session. The link is in the show notes. Veg Your Best podcast production, music, and editing by Charlie Weinshank. Thanks, Charlie. Before you go, it would mean so much to me and the Veg Your Best team if you would hit subscribe, leave us a five-star review, or share with someone you think might be interested. Something about algorithms, it helps bump us up a little in the rankings, and that's the best way to help others find the podcast and for us to find our audience. So until next week, make it easy and veg your best.